Today, the C in CEDH stands for Curveball. Welcome to Play to Win, where we play to win. I'm Dylan. And I'm Cameron. This week, we're joined by Tim and Jared of You're Dead on My Next Turn. We're You're Dead on My Next Turn. You can find us on Twitch and YouTube. So we have Tim on Ragavan Deck Wins. Cameron's playing Urza Stacks. I'm playing Gen Z Farm, a.k.a. Stranger Farm, a.k.a. Will and Luris and Lucas Blue Farm. And Jared's playing Obsidat Stacks. Tim, take us away. Any, any pregames? I do, yeah. The Leyland's, Leyland of the Void and Leyland's Sanctity. Oh my goodness, what kind of deck is this? Okay. So we're gonna play a mountain, I'm gonna tap a mountain, play Ragavan, and I'll also play a Kite Shield. Pass my turn. I'll get a draw for my first turn, Misty, and crack it right away, going to 39. It's exiled, I guess, so this is just where all my exiled cards are gonna be. Snow-covered island, Mystic Remora, and pass. Okay, draw a card. Mana Confluence? I guess I don't really want to feed that fish, do I? I'll pass turn. I'll draw. I'll play a Plains and pass. I'll untap, draw a card, play a Mountain. Ketus, Ember Claw, Familiar. Dylan, I'm gonna hit you for two at Ragavon. Everyone's gonna take two except for me, and then you're gonna exile the top. I'm also gonna create a treasure. I'm at 38. Top card is fucking Underworld Breach, Jesus Christ. And I can't play it right now, shit. That just gets exiled though, right? Yeah. Yep. All right. And uh, at that point, I will pass my turn. On my upkeep, I'm going to keep Mystic Remora around. Get a draw. Immediate regrets. <laughs> We're going to play a Jeweled Lotus. We're going to pass the turn. Draw card. Ah, uh, fuck. Cast Brainstorm. I get a draw. Yep. Three. Son of a bitch. Put back. Pass turn. Upkeep. Okay. Play a Swamp. I'll tap the Swamp to play a Soul Ring. I'll get a draw. Yeah. After that, I'll pass. Untap. Draw my card. Play a Mountain. Going to go to combat. Jared, I'm going to hit you for two. Making another treasure. Yep. Exile the top. Everyone's gonna take two then. You gotta land, Tim. All right, I can't use it, so that's fine. Quietus, Spike. I get a draw from that. Yep, pass my turn. My turn, the Mystic Remora will go ahead and die. Draw for my turn then. Last zone for turn. Crack a Lotus Petal and tap last zone to cast Urza. Karnstruck. Mana Vault. We're gonna do the three mana for a Rings of Bright Hearth, and then we'll tap it for the Dampening Sphere. Untap. Draw a card. Cast Soul Ring. Tap two to pay for my two mana mana vault and i'll pass my turn yeah so these two were in my opening hand but going right after cameron i didn't want to directly feed the fish immediately so i held them back unfortunately that kind of caused me to kind of sequence my plays kind of weird and kind of funny i had to brainstorm not when i wanted to brainstorm to try to find a land and i still didn't find it maybe this hand shouldn't have been a keep after all i'm not sure i will untap draw play a swamp academy rector my only creature after that i will pass my turn on tap i will draw my card Play a mountain, curse of uh, opalence, Cameron. I'm sorry. And then what I'll do is I'll pay three to equip Quidditch Spite to Ragavon. Cameron, you're the only one I haven't hit yet. Yeah. I created a gold token. All right, so you're gonna lose two, and then everyone's gonna lose two, and then you're gonna lose half the life rounded up. I'm at 33, so then I'll lose 17. And then you're also exiling the top card. Top card exiled is an island. We're gonna say this treasure is a gold token, and then I'll pass my turn. To you, Definitely some strange card choices, especially in a CDH game. Um, but it does put Cameron in kind of a tricky situation, either lose half of his life or lose his commander. Yeah, I'm actually starting to get a little bit nervous here. And <laughs> I'm going to start losing huge chunks of my life every turn now. And um, even though I'm not really using my life total as a resource, I still don't like where this is going. I'm going to go to my untap draw step. I'll Who's take from Dark Steel Citadel as my land for turn. We're going to cast a Trail of Evidence. Pass the turn after that. Untap. Draw a card. So is it a land? No, I know what this is because I brainstormed and locked myself two turns ago. <laughs> land a confluence to 31. I will cast Ponder. Put that on top and draw one card. Ponder gets exiled. Cast Scroll Rack. Uh, it cost one extra. You're right, it does. So this is five total mana for a three mana Scroll Rack. Two floating. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to use one mana to activate Scroll Rack. Two cards, exile, and then draw two on top. That's a Tundra that I'll play as my land for turn. My next spell costs two more to cast. Yep. So unless it's a free spell. <laughs> Would you look at that? It's a Mox Diamond that I will oh, pay there you go. two mana for and discard this Bloodstained Mire, which will go into exile. Little by little, we are getting back into this game. <laughs> too little, too late, maybe. Pass my turn. On oh, top, draw. I have one extra that I'm not going to do nothing with. I'm going to cast Obsidat. Tim, you know, I'll, st I'll start with you just because you hit me, okay? That's fine. But I love you. Only two. I'm going to gain two going back to 36. I'm at 38. I will exile him for now, and then I will pass my turn. I'll untap, draw a card, play a mountain, play Fire Shrieker. 
I'm going to Fierce Guardianship that so I can get a clue. Double Strike does mean losing half your life twice, so... <laughs> this also starts to just get me clues. Half of the reason why I just wanted to get another counter out there was just so that I could start getting more clues for more mana and more cards down the line here. Isn't that great when your deck falls into that weird engine mode where you're just like, I just need to interact so I can do more stuff. Like, I'm being benefited from just simply playing Magic. That's where you want to be. Where is this busted? I'll go to combat. Dylan, you're the only one wide open. I'll take it. So I'm at 29, so... So half my life is 14.5. So round it up is 15. So I lose 15 yep. life. So I'll go down to 14. Make another treasure. And then you're going to exile the top card. Which I know what it is. Fierce Guardianship. Pass my turn. We'll tap one, two, three, four things to untap Mana Vault on my draw step. Draw, pass a turn. Untap. Lose a life from Mana Vault. Draw a card. Cameron, how many cards in your hand? I have five. I'm going to activate Scroll Rack, Soul Ring, Flow to Mana, exile this card. Draw one. Back. Cast Thassa's Oracle. Okay, that's that's pretty good. Thassa's Oracle, ETB trigger. On the stack, I will hold priority. I'll pay one life and pay two total mana for a demonic consultation. Cameron, do you have a counter spell? Nope. Really? What card are you going to name? Jeweled Lotus. I'll exit the top six. It's not there. I'll exit the rest of my library. It's not there. Okay. With the Thassa's Oracle trigger on the stack, I would like to cast Submerge targeting your Thassa's Oracle. Get a second clue. Yep. I thought Submerge was going to be really bad this game because there's no green. This goes on top. Devotion is zero. I have one card in my library. Zero is less than that, not equal to it. We bought ourselves one <laughs> turn. That's, That's it. Pass my turn. I'll draw. I'll play Hall of Helioids. Hold well, doesn't your commander come back? Generosity. Yep. Commander comes back. I'm going to hit Dylan. Plus two. I'm going to go back to 36. Dylan's going to lose two. I'm at 10. Karmic Justice. My next spell costs one extra. Planes and then three to play Ghostly Prison. Definitely some strange card choices. Good against Najila. Not good against Durza. <laughs> and then I will hit Dylan with OB for five. You got it. I am at five. At my end step, I will take him back and I will pass my turn. I will untap, draw my card. We're going to go to combat. Dylan, I'm going to hit you for two with Ragavon. And then I'm also going to do one with Kita. But Ragavon's going to hit first. Yeah, sure. So I take two from Ragavon. You exile the top card of my library, which is Stas's I'm Oracle. I go to three. I'm down to 11, by the way. And then I lose half of my life from three, which I lose two life and go to one. Kidis will hit you for one. Then I die. I had Dispel in my hand and I was debating waiting another turn to try to hold up Dispel later. Uh, but I figured I was just dead on board anyway, so. Yep. Good shit. I'll play Humble Defector. I will just pass my turn. So we'll go to my turn. I'm gonna take a damage off of this Mana Vault. So I'm down to 10 now. Get a card for turn. Seagate Reborn tapped. We are just going to pass the turn. I will untap. Oh, this yeah. Blast Zone has a counter on it, by the way. That came up, you know, six turns after <laughs> I played that fucking land. That's part of our, like, Rule Zero conversation maybe that we should have. It's like if you forget a counter that's supposed to go on something, it's there. You remembered. You just didn't put it on. The Rule Zero conversation for this should really be if you have to put a counter on a land, it's okay because I want to layer. I want to stack my lands on top of each other yeah. in my pool. I don't want to have to worry about it sitting off to the side. Also, Wish Claw Talisman, that card comes in with three counters whether you put them on or not. I don't care. Whenever you go to activate it, then it, you have two counters on it then. Before then, if you had none, you had three. That's all. The <laughs> least relevant part of that card is how many <laughs> counters are on it. Yeah. OB is going to hit the board. Cameron, you're the only one I haven't pinged so far, so I'll ping you for two. I will gain two. Fear of safety. Tim, I will actually swing OB at you for five, and then I will exile him once again, and I will pass my turn. I will untap. I'll draw a card. Fathom, Fleet, Swordjack. I will tap my humble defector. Cameron, I'm going to give him to you. I will pass my turn at that point. At your end step, I'm going to tap, cast a Drown in Dreams, X equals five. Because I control my commander, I get to do both. So I'll get to draw five cards and have Tim mill twice X cards, so you mill 10. Also gets an, another investigation here. So I'll draw five. This past turn cycle ended up really putting me in a favorable position. All of the stacks pieces that are in play are really good against Ragavan, and they're not going to hurt me whatsoever. Additionally, Ragavan isn't actually able to get through at me anymore, so there's no real threats at the table coming in my direction here. So if I can just draw five good cards, I can put this together and win. Also important to note, there's no more blue at the table. My turn. We're going to take a damage. I'm going to start off by tapping Humble Defector 
This will let me draw two and give it back to Tim then. Oh, thanks. Cast Chain of Vapor targeting my own Dampening Sphere. But in response to that, I'm going to tap Dampening Sphere to flow to blue because that's what smart players do. I'm also then going to sacrifice my Seagate Reborn so I can copy Chain of Vapor to bounce my Mana Vault as well. But I'm going to stop there. I do, though, get another clue token. So now I can do things like cast Mana Crypt and not feel any pain, pay a colorless to cast a Mana Vault. I have a land for turn. I can play Inventor's Fair as my land for turn. Crack Inventor's Fair to go search my library for an artifact card, reveal it. So I'm going to reveal this Basalt Mon Monolith here, cast the Basalt Monolith. Tap Basalt Monolith for three colorless mana. Go to untap Basalt Monolith in infinite times using Rings of Bright Hearth's ability. I need two extra mana to do this for the first time here. But then I can present a loop where I can make infinite untaps, make infinite colorless mana. As I'm going through this colorless mana loop, I can also make infinite blue mana because once I have infinite colorless, I can just start tapping Basalt Monolith for blue instead of three colorless because of Urza. I can play Codex Shredder, dig through time, take this and this. We get to ponder here, shuffle them away. Draw a card, Polymorph, away my token. Breaker Horror. Dampening Spear to mill out Tim infinitely here. Each time I go to rebounce the Codex Shredder, I can tap it in response. And then on the last trigger, I'm gonna recast the Dampening Spear and I'm gonna bounce the Ley Line of Sanctity to Jared's hand. I need one other thing, but I have a copy artifact, so I can just kind of keep the loop going at that point. So you mill them out and then pass the turn? We definitely saw some interesting cards and deck choices from your dead on my next turn, but that was still nonetheless a fantastic showing of Urza. I feel like you did a great job piloting through, doing what Urza does very well, and showing how basically unstoppable the win condition is once you get it really going. <laughs> yeah, by the time that all was said and done, I had two different ways to keep generating infinite mana, so I don't think there was any sort of interaction that could have stopped what I was doing at that point then. Thanks so much to the guys that you're dead on my next turn. Be sure to check them out down below and check out our Patreon video that just came out yesterday if you're watching this today that it came out where we did our game two with your dead on my next turn. Same decks uh, except for instead of Ragavan, there is Turgrid. There's a couple more mistakes in that one obviously but that's why it's the Patreon one so go enjoy that as a children video. Thank you so much for watching. If you'd like to support us directly you can do so at Patreon like our $50 patrons. See Khwaja Ahamid, Jacob Depp, Reese Uker, Unforeseen God, Good Friday, CZ, Jan Wildfang, Adrian Grimm, Tommy the Oddball, Swampy McGee, Peter Larson, Cameron James, Jormags, Jimmy Midnight, Baby Jeebus, Ugly, and Moxfield. Thanks, y'all. Check out our bonfire store for our t-shirts, sweatshirts, and all of our other cool merch, too. If you want to check out any of the cards you saw today, you can do so at our TCG Player affiliate link down below. You can check out our Ultra Sleeves link for 5% off your order there. If you want to pick up any Dragon Shield product, you can help out the channel by doing so at our affiliate link for Dragon Shield down below. And check out playtowinmtg.com for your playmats and tokens. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Okay, we're fucking winging it. Fucking winging it. That's Hello, the play to win way. COVID. I'm in a deck and I've never played like this before, so this should be fun.